Hello friends, welcome back to Dr. Jagdish Academy. Uh, in my last lecture, I discussed about the peptic ulcers. Uh, in continuation with that topic, I am continuing with the peptic ulcer 2. So let's start. So in this lecture, I will discuss about the pathogenesis of the peptic ulcers. So I will discuss three theories. First is the gastrin link theory. Second is impaired defense theory. Third is the H. pylori linked theory. So first, gastrin link theory. So what it says, it says that the increase in aggressive forces is responsible for the ulcers. Increase in aggressive forces mean increase in HCL, increase in pepsin, and particularly this kind of a theory is valid for the duodenal ulcers. Impaired defense theory, it says that there is impairment in the protective forces, impairment in the defense mechanism which is responsible for the development of the ulcers. And there is a reduction in the mucus, reduction in the blood flow and the reduction in the bicarbonate secretion. Because of this one there is a development of the ulcer. Particularly this is useful, valid for the gastric ulcers. But ultimately both of these theories are interlinked with one another. So that means there is an increase in aggressive forces, that means gastrin, HCL, pepsin to produce peptic ulcers, there is a decrease in defense mechanism, bicarbonate, mucus, blood flow is reduced to produce peptic ulcers. So there is an interlinkage of these two theories. But third theory is different. This H. pylori linked theory is little bit different. It says and it is most widely accepted theories nowadays. It says that uh, this ulceration is because of some infection, some bacteria and that bacteria is called as Helicobacter pylori, H. pylori. If you see the nature of this bacteria, it is gram negative in nature and this is bacilli. Bacilli means it is rod shaped in structure. And how it is transmitted? It is transmitted by the orofecal route. That means uh, the contaminate, if you take uh, uh, the, uh, the food, if it is contaminated with the stools, okay, then it is taken by the oral route. That is the most common transmission, orofecal route. And what is the support for this H. pylori linked theory? If you give some antibiotics which can kill H. pylori, they eradicate the ulcers for a very long period of time, or you can say, or sometimes even permanent manner. So, I will discuss what is the mechanisms involved in H. pylori induced ulcer. So, there are a number of mechanisms. I will discuss one, uh, mechanism one by one. So first mechanism, it says that if there is an H. pylori, there is, there is an infection, it causes the increase in the acid secretion. How? H. pylori ultimately reduces the levels of hormone somatostatin. It is a local hormone in the GIT. And a decrease in somatostatin is followed by increase in the gastrin level. And Increase, decrease in somatostatin also causes the activation of these parietal cells and both of these ultimately causes the increase in HCL. So decrease in somatostatin, increase in HCL which is responsible for the peptic ulcer. So this is the one mechanism. Second mechanism, defense mechanism, protective mechanism is also impaired. How? It says if there is a H. pylori mechanism, it releases number of enzymes, proteases, that means which can degrade the proteins. These proteases, they break down the mucus. You know, mucus has water plus the proteins. The protein portion is broken down by this protease. So, mucus is broken down. If mucus is broken down, the defense mechanism is down. If defense is down, peptic ulceration can take place. So, this is the second mechanism. Third important mechanism. It says H. pylori can produce the inflammation and inflammation can produce the damage. How inflammation will be produced? Now, H. pylori activate the enzyme phospholipase. Phospholipase will activate the arachidonic acid and arachidonic acid will lead to increase in the levels of leukotrienes. These leukotrienes, they promote the inflammation. Moreover, Whenever there is an inflammation, there is an increase in the number of WBC. Leukotrienes, they also cause increase in the number of WBC. 
WBC, if you remember my last lecture, free radicals, WBC, they are the important sources of free radical that is hypochlorous acid. Another thing, H. pylori has an enzyme which is called as urease. As the name indicates, it acts on the urea. It breaks down the urea and the broken product of the urea is the ammonia. So, this hypochlorous acid and this ammonia both will combine to form a toxic molecule which is called as monochloroamine in which there is an amine group which is coming from the ammonia chloro which is coming from this hypochlorous this monochloroamine is produced this so this inflammation is going to produce the injury this hypochlorous acid is going to produce the injury this monochloroamine is going to produce the injury. The injury, injury of the mucus layer. And that mucus, then the submucosa, this kind of injury is going to take place. And this injury is causing the peptic ulcers. So this is what I want to discuss about the three theories. Gastrin link theory, impaired defense mechanism and H. pylori. In the subsequent video, I will discuss about the uh, things related to the tuberculosis. Thank you.